Hello, everyone. Welcome to another international capsule for the Shankar IAS Academy. Today, our topic is the visit to India by Anthony Blinken, the Secretary of State of the United States. He was here just for over a day. And on the whole, the visit was disappointing in the sense that many of us had expected that he had come to the region at a time when the situation in Afghanistan was critical. Of course, we all know that the United States forces had withdrawn and they are committed to completely withdrawing by the end of August and that they had left it to the parties in Afghanistan to find a solution for all the problems that are plaguing that country. But after our foreign minister's visit to some other countries, including Russia, Iran, um, Tashkent, I mean, Uzbekistan, and some of these uh, regional countries, it appeared as though the announcement of the Secretary of State's visit came as though he had a formula to offer. So most of us who expected Blinken to announce a new formula to bring peace to Afghanistan without uh, it being overtaken by the Taliban, were disappointed by his visit. It was obvious that the United States did not want to go back to Afghanistan in any particular way. But more than that, it did not appear that they had a contingency plan to help out the Ghani government in Afghanistan to fight the Taliban and continue in power for some more time. We know that American forces, not on the ground, but have been giving air support to the Afghan army. But beyond that, they were not doing anything to prevent the movement of the Taliban towards Kabul. So instead of putting forward a particular plan, what Mr. Blinken was simply to repeat the pious hopes and also expectations as to how things should turn out in Afghanistan. He agreed with us that Afghanistan should have a democratic, inclusive, uh, non-aligned, independent government. And India and United States were agreed on this. But what would be the steps that United States and India could do to help the Afghan government? There was no proposal. Ironically, when Mr. Blinken was in India, we were also seeing a Taliban, a high-powered Taliban delegation being received in China. And declarations were being made by the Taliban that they would welcome China to participate in the development of Afghanistan. And that Taliban would make sure that uh, they are safe and their properties will be safe, etc. Preparing the ground for what I think a massive induction of the BRI into Afghanistan and then through Pakistan. So, but Mr. Blinken did not seem to question that or even suggest that this was not going to be very healthy for Afghanistan. And moreover, after a couple of days, he said that Chinese involvement in Afghanistan may not be altogether undesirable. Perhaps there may be something good in China's approach to Afghanistan. This was even more disappointing. 
because in while talking to china he had a different approach talking to china with india he talked about the principles that united states and india share the kind of democratic background human rights so many qualities that and principles that united states and india share and made it clear that the quad about which he was very positive would provide the framework for united states and india to cooperate in bringing up in our stability bringing stability in the india pacific region so when he was independently talking about china his position was very clear that he was looking at india as a democracy to support the american efforts to contain china but unlike mr pompeo of his uh, predecessor who was mr trump's secretary of state he did not make any commitment to standing by india in the context of the chinese moves in ladakh there is no particular concern was expressed that disengagement was not taking place it is true that some discussions had started when mr blinken was here and there are some indications that there might be some disengagement in the next few days but the kind of support that the this predecessor had declared for india in the context of china i did not see it is possible that they may have, they may have been asserted asserted in the uh, official private conversations but on china he was very specific and very clear that india and china should uh, work together so if you look at mr blinken's visit in a traditional bilateral visit there are quite enough positive points about his approach to the united states but i may be wrong the impression i gained from the overall visit and the outcome of it i felt that the biden administration was still very tentative about china and india it seemed that they were still in the process of uh, analyzing the situation and coming to a conclusion as far well as china is concerned so they do envisage some amount of cooperation with china but at the same time they were quite clear that they would not allow china to dominate the world and that is a matter of some comfort to us and to make us even more comfortable mr blinken um, uh, talked about squad not being a military alliance this is our requirement because we do not want to call it a military alliance so at one stage he said that uh, squad was not a military alliance but at the same time he made it very clear that india us partnership the uh, cooperation in dealing with china is a major factor in that but um, to say that china's activities if any in um, afghanistan may not be undesirable leaves a bit of suspicion as to why he has taken that position india uh us relations he characterized it as work in progress and this he was saying in the context of some of the concerns that he expressed before he came to india about the human rights situation in india so he had said quite formally before he left that one of the things that he was going to raise in india was the 
reported deterioration of democracy in India and the growth of authoritarianism, etc. So when he said that even our two democracies are work in progress, what he was saying that maybe the Indian democracy is not mature enough, that seemed to be the suggestion. On, uh, so on the so-called vital India-US relationship and the Indo-Pacific strategy, the Quad and COVID-19, these were the issues which were discussed. Everything seemed to be tentative. As far as COVID is concerned, he declared that some 25 million dollars will be available for vaccination. He reiterated that the United States was most grateful to India for the support it gave to the United States at the initial stage of the, or stages of the pandemic. And that the future also, the cooperation will continue. He did not, did not say so, but it seemed as though the intellectual property rights related to some of the vaccines and the components of vaccines which have to be sent to India, the United States will have an open mind. So as a bilateral visit, yes, the ingredients were there. In fact, the Chinese criticized Blinken's visit as proclaiming that the United States and India were such close friends and their, their shared ideals, etc. So they criticized both saying that democracy in the Western sense is not the answer for cooperation. And they criticized the whole concept that democratic principles are which, which guide India and the United States and this, their relationship is based on these principles. So they said one man, one vote democracy is not necessarily the most comfortable and most suitable form of government. So this his assertion about the relationship between India and the United States being very principled was called into question by the, by the Chinese. But two very interesting things that Secretary Clinton did in India surprised everybody. One is he called a meeting or he met the representatives of the Dalai Lama as the Tibet government in exile. This is a very, very unprecedented meeting. Of course, the United States had its own plans for Tibet and President Trump himself had enacted a Tibet assistance plan to provide some funding for the Tibetan refugees for scholarships. And in addition to that, they said they would want to open a consulate in Lhasa. And if the Chinese did not allow the United States to open a consulate in Lhasa, no Chinese consulate will be allowed in any of the states of the United States. They had also said that no outside forces should intervene in the matter of the succession of the Dalai Lama. And if anybody intervened, action will be taken by them, by the United States. So we know that the American position had become tough on Tibet. And particularly in the context of uh, Xi Jinping's visit to Tibet just a few days earlier than that, which we think had implications for India and for the Chinese position on the border. This toughening of the position was significant. But the fact that he met the Tibetan leaders on Indian soil was something new because in the past, we have not allowed even the official representatives of the US government to have meetings with Tibetans in India. In fact, we have an understanding with Dalai Lama that he will not engage in any political activities here. 
And uh, if he wanted to do that, he had to go to Europe, he had to go to Austria, he had to go to the United States, he had some favorite countries where he used to go and make speeches and so on, but not in India. And what was the purpose of that? The purpose was that we do not provoke China unnecessarily. Dalai Lama's presence here itself is a provocation. And therefore, we didn't want to press it to a point. And after Mr. Modi's visit to Wuhan, we had even softened our position in the sense that um, we did not participate in Dalai Lama's birthday celebrations officially and did not participate in any protest activities inside India. So towards China on Tibet, we are becoming a bit soft. But his meeting here was certainly a provocation. Although I have not seen any reaction by the Chinese to this, nor from our side. And so this was a point uh, to be noted. But he did something more, which is a meeting he held of some activists, human rights activists, um, journalists, and others who are critical of the Modi government. As though it was a kind of fact-finding mission as to where democracy is in order in, um, in India. This American presidents do all the time because they have a mandate from the US Congress to look at democracies and minority situations, even with the most friendly countries. So that is why the president, uh, before Secretary of State, President Obama, when he came here, did the same thing. It was a fantastic visit. But after the bilateral visit, he went to a hall and spoke about the value of democracy and how India should not divert from its democratic principles. And we ignored it. And similarly, this time also, it seems that India has not questioned this uh, meeting. So, because he said, for example, one of the elements that Americans admire most about India is the steadfast commitment to its people, to democracy, pluralism, to human rights, and fundamental freedoms. And he went on to examining the way India functioned in a quest for self-correcting mechanisms, he said, to prepare the challenges to democracy. So all these statements appear to confirm the impression that the Biden administration was still very tentative about its judgment on India. And it is also quite clear that in settling the Afghanistan situation, they would rather depend on Pakistan rather than on India. So, on the bilateral relationship, which is being called vital, earlier President Obama used to say it is the most defining relationship in the 21st century. It appeared that there is a slight decline, or shall we say, a certain caution about uh, India and its uh, democracy. As far as the Quad is concerned, he announced President Biden's intention to convene a face-to-face -face meeting of the Quad at the summit level later this year. And there was also some discussion about the Prime Minister visiting Washington uh, later this year. So it could perhaps be an occasion where Prime Minister Modi will be in Washington to attend the Quad summit. And that shows a further strengthening of the Quad partnership. But as I said, he repeated that Quad was not a military alliance for India's sake. Our external affairs minister, Jay Shankar, responded to all this in his usual philosophical manner without showing any, any kind of emotions on this, whether it is the point, disappointment or happiness. But he added in good measure that China should not see any action by other countries 
as being aimed at China. So this was his Suomoto statement. He said, well, Mr. Blinken was talking about uh, the Quad. He slipped in this sentence that uh, when other countries do things, uh, China should uh, not think that this is aimed at them. In other sense, in other words, India's position that Quad is not an anti uh, China grouping, not an Asian NATO, et cetera, et cetera. But again, there was no indication, however, that the line of actual control situation was serious. Because when Mr. Blinken was in India, uh, there was concern that uh, the disengagement in remaining sectors in Ladakh had not taken place. And um, in a sense, Mr. Blinken's visit to the Tibetan leaders may have aggravated the Chinese attitude towards the line of actual control. Because if our intention to play the, not to play the Tibetan card or the Dalai Lama card, was intended to solve our, our mutual problems, particularly the border, peacefully. But um, this may have been uh, a provocation for uh, Tibet, together with all that the Trump administration had done, providing financial provision for support to the Tibetan community, a keep of camps in India. So meeting with the Tibetans was probably in connection with this proactive position with regard to Tibetan exile in India. And India did not seem to question that initiative. Of course, COVID-19 occupied a good part of the discussion. And there was a specific comment of US dollars, 25 million to provide for vaccination in India. As I said, the, it was explained that this was basically in reciprocity towards India's his own assistance in the early part of the pandemic. But here again, no multilateral effort was indicated because the failure of the United Nations to deal with the pandemic in a united manner because of the Chinese position remains so. Even today, there are no efforts to have a multilateral effort to take this, uh, take this forward, the pandemic cooperation. So, but it was clear that US would not be lacking in the case of extending support to India. Um, we should expect that the US would be liberal about intellectual property rights or vaccines. The competition with China is also an element in the COVID issue. And the US is still pressing for investigating the origins of the so-called uh, Wuhan uh, virus. So, but to summarize all that had happened that we know about, of course, he met uh, the Prime Minister. There may have been very important discussions, but we didn't find any, any readout on that. And uh, my own uh, feeling is that the general approach is very positive, particularly in the context of China. But the contrary to the position of President Trump, there was no clear commitment on the part of President Biden to stand by China in the event of a deterioration of the border situation. Uh, this may have to do with the fact that the US has not yet reached a definitive conclusion about with relations with China itself and India's role in it. So it's quite possible that uh, these matters will be further discussed in uh, Washington when the Quad meets, and hopefully at that time, the Prime Minister would be personally there. And the developments after that are not at all encouraging. 
the situation in Afghanistan has uh, further deteriorated. Taliban is moving forcefully to occupy the towns. Earlier, they were only in the suburbs and the villages, etc. And now they are closing in on Afghanistan. There are reports that Taliban suffered some casualties inflicted by the Afghan government, Afghan forces. But uh, the trend definitely, according to all the news sources, is that there is no let up in Taliban movement towards Kabul. We do not know what discussions have taken place in Doha after the Americans had left. And the American assurance in that context is only that if they don't follow, if they don't keep the promises they had given in Doha, the United States would not recognize the whatever regime comes up in Kabul. And as I said last time, it's, that is not a big issue for Taliban because last time also they had no recognition from most of the states of the world. Their focus is on developing a fundamentalist government, support Pakistan, get support from China, and in the process, create more problems for us in Jammu and Kashmir. So that uh, movement Taliban has not been stopped by Mr. Blinken's visit or anything else the Americans have done. So as a bilateral visit, it was a good beginning. This was the first time that Mr. Blinken was in India. And um, all the right noises were made. And there was clear transparency in its uh, dependence on India or cooperation with India in meeting the Chinese threat. But since they have not yet decided on their real strategy with China, and they still have some interests in Pakistan, China, etc., sort of operating as a stabilizing force in the whole of this region, we have some concerns. But I'm sure during the Prime Minister's visit, by then, of course, the situation in Afghanistan would have stabilized one way or the other. And that would be the time we will have a chance to compare notes with the United States and see where we go. We have no news from Iran or from Russia as to what they would be doing. Uh, but nothing helpful has been said. Some observers still believe that Iran may play a role in uh, consolidating the Shia elements in the northern part of Afghanistan. And that may create some problems for the Taliban, but we have not heard anything to indicate that Iran had an intervention, intention to intervene. So this, in sum, is what has happened, and we simply have to watch and wait for what's happening. As far as India is concerned, we have no role. We have no intention to put our boots into Afghanistan, but we will probably continue to support the Ghani government in whichever way we can without direct intervention in the country. Thank you very much. Well, I suppose we think in terms of all kinds of uh, contingencies. Of course, on Biden's son, we know, you know he uh, declared uh, he changed uh, policy towards Ukraine. And um, so that is that he has already by you know burnt his burnt hands by uh, getting involved in his business. But uh, China's China policy is much bigger than any involvement of Mr. Biden's son in China, because China has in a U.S. cooperation is very extensive. Okay. So even if Biden had no son, I think he would have been softer towards China, because uh, like like we discovered. It is very difficult to decouple China from our economic and political relationships. And that they also see where Trump was a little bit adventurous in these matters and he took very forward positions. Uh, but uh, we know Clinton did not do that. Obama did not do that. So Democrats generally have a soft corner towards China. But uh, in the 
the actions of the Chinese during the pandemic must have made the Americans realize that uh, the soft kind of approach may not help. But why is, that's why I said they are still tentative on their China policy and tentative on India policy. They are still, you know, making soundings and that is how we have to see this visit. As far as the government of India's calculations are concerned, I'm sure they have all the information and they are analyzing and dealing with it. At the, at the moment, they seem to be focusing on disengagement on the border. Yes, the options are open. But look at our situation today with the Chinese pressurizing us from one side and uh, not having a, uh, what shall we say, I suppose we have our own plans to meet the Chinese threat. But we need uh, powerful friends in this particular yeah. situation. And the only powerful friend who is willing to be with you is only the uh, United States. Okay. Russia is not doing that. Europeans are not doing that. So our options are also limited and we have to operate within that. So if we are able to uh, disengage the Chinese troops and they, we are able to reinstate our patrolling, because that's an important aspect of disengagement. Because in actual situation, we say nothing has changed because the border has not been changed. But we have been stopped from areas where we used to patrol earlier. Because we have stopped the Chinese from patrolling the areas where they used to do. That's true. In terms of non-patrolling, we seem to have lost land. And that is the issue which has to be, even after these, these people withdraw, you might have noticed reports yesterday, the day before, yeah. that India is pressing for the right to patrol the same areas that we used to do. It's part of the disengagement. Thank you. Sir. So these are all options. We are playing a chess game. You, know? you sure. have to see what you what assets you have and what the enemy has, and then the skill depends on how you move your pawns. <laughs> That's how it is. Well, I don't know really the interconnection between these tribals, tribes, etc. But we know that uh, Pakistan is not entirely united with everything that Taliban does. There is a difference between the Pakistani uh, you know, extremists and the Taliban extremists. And uh, so each will also try to see that the other one dominate, does not dominate them. So there must be a, a, a kind of underlying under currents of difference and that may have something to do with the composition of the tribes also. So that's how I understand it. And therefore, I cannot say clearly as to how this chemistry will develop. But it's quite obvious that there will be differences. And those differences may surface when the Taliban is ready to form a government. Whether they'll be willing to share power with others. So it will depend on that. And these are all uh, several imponderables. But somehow I feel right from the beginning and even now that uh, uh, a Taliban government is likely to come about at least for a, a short period at the time which when India and Pakistan and the Taliban would work out their relationship and uh, see what they will do for each other, whether they'll work together. And Chinese, if they are involved, they will try to keep them together so that the opposition to India does not get diluted. And that's all that I can see in the, in the nearest future. And I must say Mr. Blinken's visit did not give me any reason to feel comfortable about this. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.